Hi, it's Tim. And it's Amy from Go With Less. Welcome to our channel. We're happy that you're here. Today we're going to be talking with one of our new friends. His name is Dustin Waller, and he's from Waller's Wallet, which is a YouTube channel. And he talks about all kinds of things having to do with award travel. He talks about the best ways to use your points, credit cards to earn and optimize those points. He, like us, is into kind of using those points really carefully. So he's not blowing them all on a big first class trip and using hundreds of thousands of points to do that. We don't do that either. So we, even though we have a lot of points and miles, we still use them very carefully so that we can travel more often. He's of the same mindset, which made it a really nice conversation to have with him. Our plan is to have a conversation like this once a month. We call this like conversations with our tribe. So we're going to have cover a wide variety of topics. So it just so happens today that Dustin is focused on this travel hacking thing, so we're very excited to get started with this conversation. A couple quick facts about Dustin. He and his wife live in Bangor, Maine. They're expecting their first baby soon. Congratulations. And they're both pharmacists. They had $300,000 in student loan debt that they paid down in five years. Incredible. We're not talking about debt payoff in this conversation. However, uh, we are going to be talking about what they're doing in their new life, so please uh, stay tuned for our conversation. Coming right up. Hey, Dustin. Great to see you. Hey, Tim and Amy. How are you both doing today? Amazing. Fabulous. Good. It's good to see both of you again. Yeah, same here. So we met back in uh, October. Actually, it was at the end of September at CardCon in Orlando. So here we are. It's full fall. So we're going to talk a little bit about travel today. So as our, one of our very favorite topics, and we know it's one of yours as well. Oh, I love talking travel. I could talk it all day long. <laughs> and we did when we were at CardCon. So it makes yes, sense we did. online for both of our audiences because we hope that there would be some value for both groups. Absolutely. Where are you traveling these days, Dustin? So this fall has actually been a pretty busy fall for us as far as travel. Um, earlier in September, we, were able, we went to Las Vegas with some friends for a long weekend. When we came back a couple weeks later, we went to New York. Uh, then 12 hours later, I hopped on back on a plane, head down to Orlando for CardCon where I met actually both of you. Um, a couple weeks ago, we went actually, we flew out to Munich and to Paris. We spent about five days in each location. We had to count for a day of travel on each end. Uh, got to see the tail end of Oktoberfest. And when we got to Paris, it was fantastic to see all the different sites, the Notre Dame, the Eiffel Tower, the different palaces out there. Just an absolute stunning city uh, as a whole. Uh, definitely blew away my expectations as far as what the city was going to offer. Um, although I, it was pretty interesting to see the rats near Notre Dame, though, it was a little, <laughs> I, that caught me off guard. Although I heard about them, I didn't expect to actually see them. Um, and then I'll be heading off to Zurich with a buddy of mine in a couple weeks. So I'm excited to explore Switzerland as well. Was that your first time to Paris or to Munich? It is. So we typically don't travel to the same location twice. Um, but no, it was our first time both to Munich and to Paris. Um, I actually was very impressed with Paris as a whole. I know my wife loved it as well. Um, big goods there were just out of this world. No doubt. France is actually one of my favorite countries. I don't know that Tim, would you oh, say I, the I, same? I, I do love France. And so I think I used to have this opinion of France that it's very expensive and somewhat unaffordable. Um, we were there this summer for uh, almost five a month. weeks. And so more than a month, five more weeks. Than a month. And so it's, it's really an amazing place and very affordable as we found out. Yeah, yeah I agree. I, I thought, I thought Paris is more affordable than Munich, and that kind of shocked me because I, I thought Paris was going to be far more expensive, but I thought Paris had more affordable food options available to you than Munich did. And we were just in Munich in June, and we I've been to Paris four times. Actually, my Facebook feed is popping up that we were there <laughs> exactly a year ago this month. And just for people to hear this, I have been four times. I have seen one rat ever in four visits, <laughs> and it was in the metro, in the subway. So I've been around Notre Dame every time. So the rats around Notre Dame, I would be totally freaked out if I heard that. Um, and that might make me not visit because that would make me that freaked out. So to any viewers who haven't been yet, there are not rats coming all over the place. <laughs> Unfortunately, you had a bad experience. I, I did. It was that it was, was very bad. fascinating to see, nonetheless. Of course. Oh. <laughs> but uh, I'm glad that you had a good trip, and uh, yes. and we loved Munich ourselves. That was our first trip to Munich in June and to Germany. We've also been to Vegas. We were there in August this year, and so we're going to go to New York City also before the end yeah. of the year. Yeah, uh, great. Month in New York, so. And I, I love New York City. I, I could live there. It's just a fantastic place to be. 
Yep. That's our next trip. That's exactly right. So one of the, one of our challenges in New York is it, it's not very affordable. However, we've uh, found a way to be there for virtually free, at least for our, from a lodging standpoint. We're going to do some uh, house sitting there, so that's going to make it very affordable for us. And here's the best part: we're just house sitting one cat. Yeah. One cat. Oh, I love cats. I have two cats myself. I I would house sit a, a house full of cats if I could. We they're, love they're, cats. They're, we love dogs. Yeah. Cats are very low maintenance. Dogs require a little bit more attention than a cat. <laughs> yes, they do. Great, great for a pet sit. Yeah. So when we talk about house sitting, we don't charge anything for that. So we travel to kind of cool places and we don't charge them anything. They don't charge us anything, but we get to stay in places that we might visit and pay for a hotel or for an Airbnb. So it's a wonderful way. We love pets. And it, but it, it is a very different kind of a vacation. We're not going to be out doing New York City for 15 hours a day. Um, I'm right. from that area, so it makes it easy. We could just pop out and have a couple hours because when we were there to spend social time with the cat, so not to abandon her and leave her by herself. So don't want to put that message out that it's like. So a I guess from a, a standpoint of house sitting, how, how does that like? What are your typical responsibilities when it comes to house sitting, as opposed to you know my Airbnb? I pay a, a cleaning service and. I come and go as I please. So do you have a certain responsibilities that you agree to? We do. And yeah. actually, so it depends upon the property. So we've been in huge homes with a cat and a dog and a horse. The horse wasn't in the house, um, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but we've had a, a huge, huge house. So that's a lot of responsibility to have a 10,000 square foot house. We turn it over. It, we say that we'll turn it over cleaner than we got it. Most of the time, the housekeeper just left. So we're trying to keep it cleaner than the housekeeper, which is really <laughs> hard to do. But we're Absolutely. really that. And so clearly that's a lot of responsibility just to keep it clean like that. But we're taking care of all the pets and keeping the routine with the pets as if their owner was there. So we're kind of careful that we're not taking uh, house sits. We're not taking them on if the owner is someone who's like a, at home constantly with their pet 24 hours a day. That wouldn't make sense for us. So we try to find a happy medium where we can go out for, I don't know, four to eight hours a day and be, like, again, we're not abandoning the pet in any way. We're staying home every night, but we're taking out the trash. We're bringing in the mail. We're, Tim, uh, we actually did a whole video on house sitting chores. He's trimming hedges and doing the lawn, like mowing the lawn. So that's kind of a lot. But uh, but when we were there for a month in a beautiful situation, it was actually kind of nice. And plus, it wasn't me who did it. Yeah, it's, it's worth, it's worth, it's <laughs> it was worth, great. It's worth the effort for sure. But it's not it's not a vacation. And so that's something when we talk about house sitting, we usually say that. So it's not like you're in an Airbnb. But the response, the thing we like about it, so we like slower travel. And the thing that's nice about this is it allows you to just travel more slowly. And you're living like a local. So it's not like you're you're there and uh, you're just on vacation. So we, right. we, we like style that. of travel. No, that, that's a great aspect of travel uh, as a whole, being able to kind of live like a local as opposed to staying in your little cookie cutter hotel room and being really away from really how locals live. So that that's, that's a great aspect. You're totally right. And we say, so I, I think that Airbnb became so uh, huge partially because of its affordability, but also because it allows people to live like locals and people really love that. What we learned through the house sitting is that Airbnb is kind of like a stepping stone in between. So the hotel is at one level, there's Airbnb, but they tend to be in kind of the touristy areas um, often where people might want to travel. Uh, the house sitting is totally different. We're going to the dog park where in places where hotels might not even exist. So we are constantly weighing out, do we want to stay in like that maybe cookie cutter hotel, like you mentioned, or a home? It's a very different experience. So what we've learned is that we like a combination. And, um, and, and, yeah. and we, we stay in plenty of cookie cutter hotels. So that's <laughs> too, so that we don't want to be disparaging. Yeah, saying we love hotels. those too. So we use points and miles to stay in plenty of hotels. Yeah. And that's when we're going to be doing those long travel days. So in Munich, for example, we did stay at a great hotel there with a nice redemption. Um, but that made sense because we were out for really long days. Right. Hotel. Fantastic. Yeah. So tell me, how how have you used award travel to book your travels recently? I mean, you guys do seem like you do an extensive amount of traveling. How does the points and miles really come into play here? You want me to answer that? Sure. Well, I'll talk about a big, we could talk about this for years. And as a matter of fact, we do talk about this for years on our YouTube channel. So please subscribe over there if this is something of interest. But I'm going to talk about a biggie. And we just got back this summer from a 63-day trip to Europe. We've never been able to take that kind of time, but this year we were, and it's really nice that we're retired because we mixed five weeks of quick travel, 
through like 10 cities kind of hustling in, in five weeks. And then we piggybacked a four week house sit in France. So it was kind of the best of both worlds. But how we hacked that, there were a couple things. Uh, first of all, our flight was canceled on the way over, which might not be a hack. And we were really disappointed because we arrived a full day late. But we ended up getting over $1,000 compensation for that because of an EU regulation. But the interesting thing about that Chicago uh, cancellation is that we were in line rebooking tickets for uh, the next day for hours and hours and many, many hours. Not a single person mentioned a peep of this. So I'm guessing that people don't know about that, but it's uh, there's an EU regulation that gives you compensation if you apply for it. Like I said, we have a whole video. We used a service for it who took a cut and it was worth every penny for us. Um, however, that chip, so we first of all got $1,000 back. I'm not gonna call that a travel hack because you can't plan for that. <laughs> but, uh, but we used our United points. We got a great uh, redemption on those. And so we flew to Krakow, Poland and then made our way back over those uh, 63 days, we flew out of Zurich, uh, where I know, I know you'll be heading soon. So we flew out of Zurich, and that was only taxes and fees, which were wiped out with uh, a cash back credit card. Uh, awesome. We stayed for we stayed in nine hotels. We stayed in eight Airbnbs. All of except for two nights, all of those were covered by either um, points and miles or by. Um, cash back, cash back. Like wage sort of stuff. exactly so that was of, of all we only paid for two nights out of pocket and it made sense because it was a good cash rate uh, but that was like I said that was it was 23 nights at hotels nine hotels so that that was that was really nice uh, and then we also used our chase ultimate rewards points to take we usually don't use it for like stuff to do and activities mm -hmm. but we did because we found a good redemption in the chase ultimate rewards portal and we did a nice walking tour uh, in Prague uh, and that was that was did you say how much the, the 63 days was the total yeah this actually the 60 I did it the 63 days the entire total out of pocket after you yeah. take out the uh, the thousand dollars we got back at yeah. that that's in there. It was not even six, uh, it was not even three thousand dollars. Oh, that's cheap for a nice <laughs> sixty-three day trip. And yeah. so, in something else, when we talk about that, that's every penny we spent. So that's food, that's lodging, that's airfare, tours. that's tours, that's every single penny. So that we spent on the trip. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. How about you? I know that you have a lot up your sleeve. Yeah. So a lot of our travel. I mean, I haven't paid for an airline ticket in well over four years. Uh, by utilizing these points and miles. But our most recent trips um, were pretty straightforward redemptions in the fact that we used American Airline miles um, flying from Bangor over to Munich, which was 60,000 miles total and about, I think like $80 in taxes to get over, no, I'm sorry, it was $10 in taxes to get over to Munich. And when we got to Munich, we actually took, after our trip, we took a flight on Flying Blue over from Munich to Paris, which was $80 a person, which I redeemed cash back for. And then again, I used American airline miles to fly us home at 60,000 miles total and about $110 in taxes and fees. Uh, so we were very fortunate to find some saver availability on American airlines to redeem those points on. Um, and then as far as res our, our stays, we're big Airbnb fans when we travel international for the fact we like a washer and dryer. It allows us to pack lighter, and we typically try to save money by cooking one meal inside per day, which Airbnb gives us that kitchen. You're using a cash back card to wipe away the taxes, so that's the card that you charge your airfare on? Or, or so, well, actually, it, well, because I earn my cash back on a, different, a variety of different credit cards, yeah. I'll typically book my travel on a card that gives me the most points or cash back, and then I'll just go back into my cash back fund, I call it, and redeem against those rewards. So I'm not typically redeeming for, I'm not purchasing a reward for less value or earning fewer points on those purchases. I'm just making sure I redeem against that reward with my cash back fund. Got it. And uh, your trip over that you just mentioned that you said it was $10 in taxes and fees. That seems really low for an international trip, especially since I'm sure you were connecting from Bangor, Maine. I'm sure Bangor, Maine to uh, Munich wasn't a direct flight. Uh, so how, how was it just that low naturally? Because that seems crazy. Uh, we've been very fortunate in finding tickets. So on the way over, we've been really fortunate to find the taxes and fees to be relatively low on our award flights over. The tickets back from Europe typically have the higher taxes and fees for us. Uh, so we have, we've been very fortunate to find $5 around, uh, $5 international trips or even 10 to $20 in taxes, uh, depending on which partner you were to utilize. Uh, but for American, for us, we've been very fortunate. They have, we haven't seen the taxes and fees really increase on them. 
And then as far as for Zurich, we were able to find, I was actually able to find two off peak award on American airlines. So I'm flying me and my buddy round trip total for 90,000 American airline miles and about $170 total in taxes and fees. Um, it's great to see those off peak awards for American airlines. Cause it does give some extra value for those there. And cause him and I don't actually live in the same area. I was actually able to link up the itineraries to where we meet in Philadelphia and fly the same, say on fly on the same flight over to Zurich together. So cool. it took a little bit of puzzle piecing together, but I was able to get that to work. And maybe you'll get your flight canceled and that would be even better. <laughs> I, I'm always willing to take the bump for sure to earn that compensation. So we, and, uh, we were in, in Zurich briefly uh, this last summer in our, our European trip. And so uh, in Switzerland in general, it is crazy expensive in Switzerland. So I save I, I your was, pennies. Uh, yeah. Uh, amazed at how expensive it was there. Yeah. Blow away expensive. No. Yeah. It's always, it's always a challenge to find places that are typically are expensive to find those lower cost food options that still deliver high quality food and give you a piece of the experience. Actually, we find it doable everywhere. Switzerland was an exception for us. So we've been to some really expensive countries, but, and that's, that's again, that's kind of what our, our channel is about is how to find really, cause we're food obsessed. So how to find great food and great things to do without spending a ton of money. Switzerland made that hard. Yeah, even the grocery stores are yeah. just crazy. Yeah, okay. Well, that's just good. That's ready. good information. <laughs> Our last big question today. What credit cards are you using to make all this happen? So the credit cards that are currently in my wallet, um, right now for groceries and for dining, you domestically, I'm using the American Express Gold Card with that earns four points per dollar on all those purchases. For international dining, I'm actually using my Uber credit card, which earns four percent back. So that's a very big staple for me. Um, as far as other credit cards, I'm big on the rotating five percent category credit cards. So I actually just utilized the US Bank Cash Plus credit card on furniture purchases and I earned 5% back on all my furniture purchases recently. Is that a, is there a category called furniture or is what, what sort of category is that where you're getting 5%? Yeah. So the US bank cash plus is pretty interesting in the fact that you actually get to pick your 5% categories oh. from, a, from a, from like a list of them. You don't get to just freely pick, but there's a list and furniture stores is actually on that. It's all those like ride shares and a, a lot of other categories. So it's unique in the sense that it kind of gives you that customization for your 5% categories. Um, you know, the standard discover it and chase freedom. I think a lot of people have just for those categories, but probably the one card that stays in my wallet and will stick in my wallet is the USAA limitless card. And that actually earns me two and a half percent cash back on all my purchases. So that's a pretty fantastic return that comes with no annual fee and has no foreign transaction fees and actually chip and pin as well, which has been huge for us to use in Europe. You have to have military connections to have that card. Yeah, so my dad was in the military, so I'm, I'm a military brat, so I was able to get access to USA. I've been banking with them for probably 15 years now, so when that card came out, I was able to get, get my way into getting that card. Very cool. We could just be jealous, I guess. We can't qualify for <laughs> That's that. Right. So what about you? What credit cards are you using for your travel hacking? I have three brand new cards that I've just signed up for that uh, I'm working on meeting the minimum spend for, so they're at the top of my uh, wallet right now. So we have uh, the Citibank Premier card. It had a 60,000 point um, promotion and uh, no annual fee for the first year. So I'm looking to have that. So I don't have any thank you points today. So that's a nice card to add to sort of our arsenal of points. So with this card, we'll have ultimate reward points. We'll have from Chase, from Chase, Chase ultimate reward points. We'll have American Express membership reward points. And now we'll have thank you. So all of the transferable programs will have some points in. So that makes it so that we have, we have a lot of ground covered for anything that comes up when it comes to value with points and miles. And then um, we also, I have, when I traveled for business, I stayed pretty much exclusively at Marriott properties. And yeah. so I have an SPG, uh, I had an SPG card that I subsequently upgraded to the SPG luxury. Okay. Which isn't necessarily a card that I'd recommend for most people, but I, for just an upgrade, I got a hundred thousand point bonus. And so um, it's an expensive card though. It is it? an expensive card. So it's 450 bucks a year. But it did make sense for us. It made sense for us. So you get $300 in um, uh, travel Marriott credit. travel credit back. And so that we'll use that. So that makes it only 150 bucks. So the way I see it, I paid $150 to have a hundred thousand uh, Marriott points. So it's a pretty good return. <laughs> yeah, not, not a bad return. And then I also just signed up for IHG. Uh, I can't remember which. I think it's it's the they have two cards. In the, the premier, the IHG premier, premier credit card. Premier. 
here. So yeah, so I have the city premiere and the IHG premiere, which is very confusing. But so I have the IHG premiere card, and that's another hundred thousand point uh, promotion. And so I think I did have to pay the annual fee on that card with that promotion, but I have a hundred thousand IHG points. And we have, uh, we already have the other IHG card, and so we have a nice collection of those points in the bank. It also gives you an annual free night. So. Um, so I'm, I'm working towards those three. We're, I think it's eleven thousand dollars worth of minimum spend. I've got to meet, and I think I've got 120 days to do it. So uh, no, anyway, this is a big spending season for us. Yeah. For many reasons, we have insurance bills that are due and other things. So it shouldn't be a problem to meet the eleven. No, hey, you use your spend to, to an advantage, earn those points for your for your free travel. Exactly. And uh, that's so you mentioned at the beginning that we spend thirty six thousand dollars a year to live. So where is he getting this $11,000 in, I don't know, 120 days. So we're covering that in the video. I'm going to pop up a link in a card above so that you can see because we're doing some creative things to make sure that he's meeting those minimum spend requirements so that we in fact get those bonuses, but we're not signing up for cards. Like what he's talking about. We're not doing that I'm not every, doing quarter. This every quarter. No, this right. is kind of unusual. Yep. Yeah. It was awesome chatting with you today, Dustin. Oh, it's great talking with both of you. This is fantastic. Yeah, so thank you for uh, watching to our audience and to yeah. Dustin's audience. This was a, a great. So we, we love this collaboration idea. We could, as we talk, we've said many times, we could talk for hours and hours and hours. This points and miles stuff is so wide and deep. There's a, a thousand topics. And so, uh, oh, you, I feel I could talk on this for hours on end and it's mm -hmm. nonstop. I'm pretty sure um, my wife hears it more than she'd like to hear about it, but you know, it's, it's just a fascinating topic. It's very, I'm very passionate about it. And it's just great to have our audiences be able to see your, your take on how you travel, especially so frugally uh, living on, you know, $36,000 a year and how you utilize house sitting as one of your main lodging uh, to really reduce that cost. That's, that's quite interesting. Thanks. It's completely changed our life. Uh, yeah. It really has, yeah. Um, and so we're going to be chatting about travel hacking, the kind of things that came up in this video. We're going to be chatting about that one time a month. Tim takes over on that. And then the house sitting, I chat about that one time a month also. Our videos come out every Wednesday. So hopefully you will subscribe to that uh, channel and also to Dustin's Waller's Wallet and get updates from all of us. Thank you awesome. for watching. Thank you both. It was great. It was great talking with both of you.